Okay, let's sit and meditate for a few minutes. Anam Pavana Sakpaktan. Close your eyes. Focus on your breath. Watch the breath all the way as it comes in and all the way as it goes out. Start with a few good, long, deep in and out breaths to energize the body. And if you find that long breathing feels tight or constricted, try to relax around it. Either that or change the rhythm of your breathing. You can make it lo shorter or in short, out long, in long, out short, heavier or lighter, faster or slower, deeper or more shallow. Try to get in touch with the way of the breath has an effect on the body. Because the better the effect on the body, the more easily the mind will be able to settle down here in the present moment. And it's when the mind is settled down that it gains strength. We live by strength of the body and strength of the mind. And the breath, when you work with the breath, it's good for strengthening the body. And when you give the mind a place to settle down, it's good for strengthening the mind. But if you had to choose between the two kinds of strength as to which is more important, you'd have to say it's strength of the mind. Because if your body is strong but your mind is feeling weak or discouraged, you're not going to be able to do much of anything at all. You have to give yourself encouragement. You have to give yourself strength. make sure the mind is in good shape, because then when the mind is in really good shape, then when things don't go well outside, you're, you're still okay. The body can get weak, the body can get old and get sick. Even when the body dies, if the mind has its own strength, it can go far. So we have to focus on strengthening the mind. The Buddha said there are five ways you can do that. One is through developing conviction. It means conviction, the fact that the Buddha is awakened, which may seem far away, but when you bring it closer home, what it means is that from the Buddha's example, you learn that true happiness is possible and it's something you can do with your own efforts, that your efforts really do make a difference. Some people tell us that everything is already preordained, we have no free will. Other people tell us the world is really chaotic, sometimes good people suffer, but sometimes bad people gain happiness. doesn't seem fair. But from the Buddha's awakening, he discovered that your actions really do bear results. And the better your intention, the better the results of the action are going to be over the long term. You may not see all those good benefits right away, but they will be there. So that gives you the strength to focus on what you're doing and to try to, try to be really careful about what you're doing, to realize that this is important. It really does make a difference. What you do, what you say, what you think does have an impact on shaping your life. That right there strength gives you a lot of strength. You don't, you're not just a victim of events outside. But you can be more proactive. You can work on developing good qualities in mind, and it really will make a difference. So that's the next strength, as you get persistent in doing this. You just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. You find ways of giving yourself energy. You think about all the good things that will come if you develop good qualities and all the bad things that will come if you don't. And that gives you the energy to get up and do something. At the same time, you have to realize that life is not long. We have only a little bit of time. And we don't know how much time that is. We know that the end is going to come someday, but we don't know what that day is going to be. It may, may come soon. It may come a long time away. So you know that you do have the opportunity right now to do, the, to do good, to shape your life in a good direction. So you take advantage of the opportunity you've got and just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. Because you don't understand the principle of action is not a traffic law. It's not enforced only certain hours of the day or certainly certain days of the week. It's 24-7, all day, every day. So you want to make sure that your actions are skillful all day, every day. Anything unskillful comes up in the mind, you let it go. Now to do this, you have to be mindful. You have to remember all of these things because it's so easy to forget. You get involved in something you, that you really like doing, and you don't want to remember that it's unskillful. So sometimes our forgetting is just natural, and sometimes it's willful. Sometimes we want to forget, so we go ahead and do something unskillful that we've liked in the past. But mindfulness cuts through that. It reminds you, okay, you can't get away with anything. And the goodness that you do, it's not like it's an executioner just waiting to kill, kill your happiness. The goodness you're doing, as the Buddha said, is another word for happiness. The kind of happiness that comes when you know you've helped somebody, when you've abstained from harming other people. That kind of happiness lasts long. So you want to keep that in mind as you go through the day, as you go through your life. Don't forget those principles. When you do this, the other two strengths will develop, concentration and discernment. The mind will be easier to settle down. 
And when the mind is settled down, it, gets, it gains a sense of nourishment inside, a sense of well-being inside. And it lets you see things more clearly. You begin to see what's what, what you've done, what the results of, of what you've done, they become a lot clearer. And you begin to get a better and better sense of how skillful the mind can be and how much happiness the mind can create for itself. That way you let go of all your unskillful attitudes. And the mind gets strength stronger and stronger all the time. So these are the five qualities that we need to develop in order to develop the mental strength that we need to go through the day. So that when we're dealing with difficult people, we're dealing with difficult situations, we don't just give in to the difficulty. If someone tempts us to do something we know is wrong, we don't give in to the temptation. We keep the mind strong. We keep it resilient. Because it discovers that its strength it doesn't have to depend on having nice sights or nice sounds or nice t tactile sensations or nice things outside. It can depend on its own inner qualities. That's what keeps it strong. If you're dependent on things outside being a certain way, that makes the mind weaker and weaker all the time. But if you learn how to become an independent source of your own strength, okay, that's, that strength can take you far, all the way through life, all the way past life. So try to invest as much time and energy as you can into developing this kind of strength. We take the body down to the gym to strengthen it, but that kind of strength can last only a little while. It's the strength of the mind that's really long-lasting. That lasts even when the strength of the body inevitably has to fail. So this is where the, your wisest investment of time and energy is.